what a time it's been for the world of chess recently gukesh won the fide classical world championship bringing the title back to india after decades and uh, rapid and blitz championship also concluded where magnus and nepo shared the gold inspired by these moments i thought it would be nice to work on an interesting fun project where i pitched chat gpt against stockfish engine stockfish engine is one of the best engines available out there for chess you will learn a lot of things from this video such as calling chat gpt api how to build dynamic prompts session state management in streamlit working with sub processes some chess specific concepts image rendering creating simple ui for your application so let's jump right into it So before we take a look at the code it's important to understand these two chess concepts but if you really don't want to understand that's also fine you can straight away jump onto the code or the next section but for those of you who really want to understand and like chess i think this is going to be really informative so the first thing is fen or forsyth edwards notation so it's just a notation of uh, the current chessboard state so here you can see that this is the chessboard and this is how it looks when the game starts and uh, it's the white pieces or the white side which will make the first move so now we will start to look at uh, what these things mean so here you will see all these are lower cases and r represents rook and then n for knight b for bishop q for queen k for king so this is going to be the black side and uh, all these p's are going to be the pawns so here all they, these are all represented by p's and then 888 so these are the numbers which represent these rows so all of these boxes in these rows are empty right now so it says 8 but when we will make some moves it will change to different notation and then here we have uh, capital or uppercase p's which represent the pawns of white side and then here we have uppercase r n b q k b and r which represents uh, rook knight bishop queen king bishop knight and rook so this is going to give us the current chess state and this 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 word here represents which side is going to make the move so right now nobody has made a move and as i said white is going to make the move first move so here it says w which means it's white's turn now here you will see kq kq so uppercase for white lowercase for black so for both of them castling is possible at uh, king side as well as at queen side now comes this dash so this dash shows on person move so right now there are no on person available here but if there will be something in the future it will be shown here if you don't know what on person is there are lots and lots of videos available online you can simply search for that and then comes these two numbers zero and one so zero represent a half clock used for the 50 move draw rule and uh, one represent full move number starting from one and uh, incremented after black's move now let's try to make one move and see how these numbers change so i will move this pawn from e2 to e4 it's a pretty bad looking pawn but let's say that's pawn there and we don't have anything here and now if you look at this number it should show eight for this eight for this and then here it will show one two three four and then pawn one two three three so this number will change to 4 p3 and this law this row still has eight empty boxes so it will still be eight so as and when we make moves this these numbers will start to change so that's all about fen or forsyth edwards notation now let's move on to uci which stands for universal chess interface protocol it is a communication protocol used to interact with chess engine like stockfish it allows chess programs to send commands and receive responses in a standardized format so it's actually a lot more simpler than fen so here you saw that i made this move from e2 to e4 so when you send this command or when you send a move uh, using this protocol all you do is you just say your starting position which was e2 and then you mention your end position which was e4 so that was white's move now if black makes its move uh, let's say black moves e7 to e5 so black move their pawn from this position to this position so this is going to be the move which will be recorded like this so it's as simple as that now let's set up the environment and uh, take a look at the code 
before we take a look at the code let me show you what we are going to build today so the first thing is this slider using which you can choose the rating it ranges from 500 to 3000 and by default it is set to 1500 if you increase the rating the stockfish engine will be a lot more skillful and if you reduce it the stockfish engine is not going to play that well now the next thing is the chessboard itself chat gpt will always have the first move because chat gpt will make its move when the move count is going to be even and the move count will be set to zero to start with so yeah chat gpt will get the first move and stockfish will reply to those moves and to keep making moves you just need to press r on your keyboard so here chat gpt has already made its move i pressed r and uh, stockfish made its move which is e7 e5 i pressed r again and chat gpt made its move which is from g1 to h3 i'll press r again and uh, stockfish made its move which is pawn from d7 to d5 so like this you can keep pressing r and uh, you can progress through the game one thing that i noticed is that chat gpt is not really that great at playing the chess so i thought maybe it's because of the api and i did not do any fine tuning so i went to the chat gpt user interface itself and i tried playing chess there but there also it didn't really play that well so yeah chat gpt is not really that good at playing the game of chess but by doing this project it's a little bit more fun when compared to a simple summarization project before we jump into the code you need to download two things the first one is stockfish the stockfish is a free and open source chess engine available for various desktop and uh, mobile platforms it can be used in uh, chess software through the universal chess interface also known as uci here we are going to download the windows version and the next one is gtk so gtk will help us to render the image all you need to do is go to this link and uh, go to the installation section and when you click on msys2 it will take you to this page where you can click on this executable file and download it and then you can follow the steps to install gtk on your system now let's jump right into vs code and take a look at the code itself so let's start with creating the virtual environment so you need to run this command python minus m vn you can give the name to your environment i will just keep it as vn i won't press enter here because as you can see i have already created the environment once your virtual environment is created you need to activate it for that you can use this command and once you press enter you will see bracket vn in front of your path now that the virtual environment is activated we need to install some of the packages like uh, python chess open ai streamlit pi cairo and dot uh, env so after running this code your environment will be all set up and you'll be good to go now let's take a look at the code itself first let's look at our imports we are using several key libraries such as streamlit for our web interface python chess for chess logic open ai for chat gpt integration sub process for running stockfish and uh, cairo for rendering the chessboard here we load environment variables using load underscore dot env this is where sensitive data like uh, api key is stored securely next we configure the openai client to use the chat gpt api the model is set to gpt4 o mini and the api key is being fetched from environment variables next this function handles chat gpt's move generation it takes the current board position and uh, rating then sends the prompt to the chat gpt api here we generate a list of legal moves and include them in the prompt sent to chat gpt api along with the rating and the current chessboard state ensuring that it uh, selects a valid move here we send the prompt to the model specifying parameters like temperature for randomness and uh, the number of tokens for the brevity here we clean the response and validate it 
if chat gpt suggests an illegal move we fall back to the first legal move you can see that i'm sending all the legal moves possible but we are aware that chat gpt can hallucinate so maybe what if it sends an illegal move we still need to take care of that so this part of the code will take care of that issue now let's look at the stockfish integration this function uses a sub process to interact with the stockfish engine this defines a function called get stockfish move that takes two arguments first one being the board so it is a chess dot board object which holds the current state of the game and the next parameter is rating which is an integer representing the skill rating for uh, stockfish which influences the engine's behavior this line here defines the path to the stockfish engine executable it's platform specific so this path is for a windows system with a 64-bit architecture supporting avx2 instructions the path should be updated according to where your stockfish binary is located here a new process is created using the sub process dot p open function to run the stockfish engine std in equal to subprocess.pipe allows communication with stockfish's input to send the commands std out captures the stockfish's output so we can read its response std error captures any error message from stockfish universal underscore new lines ensures that input and output are treated as text the UCI or Universal Chess Interface Protocol is a standard way to communicate with chess engines. This first line sends the command to Stockfish to start in UCI mode. This line sets Stockfish's skill level to 20. Skill level ranges from 0 to 20 and 0 being the weakest and 20 being the strongest, usually corresponding to the highest skill setting. This line sends the current board state to stockfish in FEN or Forsyth Edwards notation format. The fen function on the board object returns the current board state in FEN format. This command instructs stockfish to start calculating a move. It will think for 1000 milliseconds or one second before returning a move. And all these commands are followed by flush function or command which ensures the commands are sent immediately. This line here initializes an empty string to store the best move. The while true loop reads each line of output from stockfish via process.sdtout.read line. And if the line starts with best move, stockfish has finished calculating and has provided its best move. The move string in UCI format is extracted by splitting the line and uh, taking the second element the loop then breaks as we have the move after obtaining the best move this command instructs stockfish to quit this command waits for the stockfish process to terminate fully before continuing it ensures all resources are properly cleaned up finally the function returns the move made by stockfish by converting the uci move string into a chest move object which is used internally by the python chess library now the next function is render chessboard this function converts the chessboard state into a png image using the cairo svg library so the chessboard you saw on the streamlet app it is nothing but an image finally the main function ties everything together it manages the game loop alternating moves between chat gpt and stockfish here, creating a page title and setting the range for the rating from 500 to 3000 and by default the slider will be set to 1500. Here I am making use of session state because you might already know that every time you reload a page or you interact with a filter, Streamlit runs the app from starting till the end but we don't want the current state and the move count to be lost. And reset so I'm making use of session state here so here if the board is not in the session state then it means the game hasn't started so we set the board to the starting point using chess.board and also we are making the move count as zero now using this logic we are alternating between the chat GPT API and stockfish 
So every time the move count is even, it is going to be ChatGPT's turn. And uh, when it is odd, it is going to be Stockfish's turn. And after every turn, we're just increasing the count or the move count by one. And here we are just rendering the current state of the chessboard. And if the game is over, we just show game over and the result. And you can also click on new button or new game button to start a new game. So there you have it. If you enjoyed watching this video or if you learned something from this video, give it a thumbs up and you may consider watching this video next where I talked about some of the best data science tools of 2024. See you on the other side.